As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend. great big welcome. We're glad you're joining us today on 3ABN Today. We really have a Bible subject that you, you, you just don't want to miss. It's one that could go and go and go, and maybe it needs to be. It needs to be some clarity, and we pray by the grace of God today that it will be clear as we take time to study the Word of God. As most of you know, when we do a program like this, uh, sometimes we go into parts, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> We're going to try to get by with one, but you know, if we don't, so what? Why? Because it's so, so very important. And the subject is, again, one you've heard a lot, victory over sin, or what must I do to be saved? That should be a question that each one of us is asking every day of our life. What must I do to be ready for the soon coming of Jesus with the condition of the world, mm -hmm. the way that it is? These questions are being asked, I'm going to say, by the millions oh, of yes. people every day. Many are examining their life. Many are looking at signs of the times and they're saying, boy, Jesus is soon to come. And then they look around and say, am I really ready? Mm -hmm. And I think that pertains mm -hmm. to, to Christians. Right. Amen. Just Christians. Not just the world, but to us, am I really ready to meet Jesus when mm -hmm. He comes in the clouds of heaven? And in our lesson, we're looking at the slippery slope of sin. That's right. That's right. And it is. And so we're going to examine because we have sins that we need to deal with. We have our, our faults. We have different things that are, I'm going to say repeated failures, mm -hmm. repeated failures. Do they, do they really need to take place in our life or does God have a, an answer for all of these that he's going to give us grace and strength and power to be more than conquerors through Christ? There's going to be some questions we believe that each one of you, uh, we, we pray we have answered here today. We're going to use as our, our foundation here, but I'd like to have prayer first, then go into Isaiah. It gives you time to get your Bible, pencil, and paper and write this down. We're going to read Isaiah 1, verses 16 through 20. Isaiah chapter 1, 16 through 20. And I'm going to ask each one to just read a verse. There happen to be five of us and five verses. Amen. So that'll get us warmed up and get us ready to go. Amen. So be sure and get your Bible out. But first of all, we need, to, we need to have prayer. This is, again, such an exciting subject, and, and I want us to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Brother Eric, would you pray for us, please? Absolutely, Kenny. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be here today discussing a subject that, that resonates in all of our hearts. Mm -hmm. It's a subject that we can all learn from, Lord, and please help us to learn from this subject. Amen. Please fill each of our hearts, Father, here with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm and those watching and those listening so that we can all gain from this yes. and grow from this. We thank you, Father, and we praise you mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. I guess it would be nice maybe to maybe introduce mm -hmm. the ones that are here helping today and working along with us. We praise God for it. It takes time and energy and, and effort, but it's always such a blessing as we come together to study the Word. And to my right, my wife, Sister Chris. Hi. Glad you're here as usual. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm glad to be here. <laughs> right arm. She's on my right side. Right arm, right? That's I'm right. very grateful and thankful for her and uh, for her love for Christ and always willingness to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. Are you happy in Jesus today? Oh, yes. Well, no better place. Let's show on your face. Yeah, there no. you go. Oh, yes. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, there's no better place than where the Lord wants you to be Amen. and working in His vineyard. Amen. Because you know, it, it not only blesses others, we pray, but mm -hmm. it's a blessing to us. It flows both directions. Right. So. Amen. Who do you have on your right? I have Brother Ryan Day. Yes. 
<laughs> our brother in the Lord, yes, our sure neighbor is. in the community, yeah. and a Praise good friend. We really mm. appreciate him and yeah. his family, and Amen. and I know he wears a lot of hats here. Yeah. And uh, before we start recording, they talked about singing, and it was kind of interesting. <laughs> he said, you know, everybody has a different gift. And I said, would you like to talk about that some more? <laughs> 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 but we are blessed by his singing mm. as well. So Praise the Lord. I'm glad that he's I'm thankful. He's, to me, it's a spiritual workhorse. Yes. Can I say Amen. that? Spiritual wor workhorse because he just loves. seems like the more that's put on him, the more he accepts mm -hmm. it that's that's right. and says yes that's right. by the grace of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise I love God. it. I love it. It's oh, good to be here. You know, amen. And then to your right, that's right. We Sister Marilyn. Marilyn Duran. Good. Okay. So nice to have them yes. here, isn't it? It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Amen. You have somebody to your right that you're familiar with, I'm sure. I do. Yeah. My husband, Eric. Eric, <laughs> Eric Durant. All right. It's good to be here. Yeah. I'm very, very blessed to have a wife and a ministry to serve, and I'm yeah. just praising the Lord. Tell Thanks. us oh, a little good. bit this about is, what you do here yeah. at 3ABN. Uh, I'm the manager of the call center mm -hmm. and uh, we take care of all those orders and mm -hmm. shipments going out and it's a wonderful group that I have. So mm -hmm. and I, I, know, it. And I know in the past I've appreciated your work <laughs> over there very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Eric. Go That's ahead. okay. I'm one of the engineers here and I basically fix what's broken, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do a lot of installing, write software. Ah and uh, preach as much as I can Ooh, to uh, glory. everyone I can. Amen. Praise uh, the Lord. I think maybe he's, he's doing it today, isn't uh Oh, he? that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Praise working the Lord. a little different area, but working for the saving of souls. Praise God for that. Praise Good. the Lord. Good. We're going to just jump right into our, our lesson here, but Isaiah chapter 1, and uh, Sister Marilyn, we're going to ask you to read verse 16. Okay. We'll let the ladies go first. 16, <laughs> 17, Brother Eric 18, Brother Ryan 19, and I'll do verse 20. Okay. Isaiah 16. Wash yourself, make yourself clean, put away the evil of your doings. Mm -hmm. From before my eyes, cease to do evil. Yes. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Those, they shall be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, verse 19, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the oh. good of the land. <laughs> Amen. Verse 20, but, starts out, if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, mm. for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, has spoken it. I mean, that's pretty mm. heavy duty. So we're getting a yeah. you know, description in the Ephesians about God's church, His glorious church, and how it's going to be when he, He's going to come right here. But you know, it says here, but putting what we're going to be talking about today in reality, you know, character changes. Amen. A lot of people say, oh, that's easy. This is a fight. This is a struggle. Isn't mm -hmm. that what you read in Scripture? That's right. It, that's right. It, we fight. We're going to struggle. We're, right. We need to persevere. We have to endure. Mm -hmm. So this is more than just saying, okay, well, I just, uh, there's some character changes that need to take place in our hearts and our lives. And this next paragraph is powerful. And then we begin question number one, honey. After you, would you just read that for us? Sure. Yeah. You, well, you mentioned that it, a lot of people think it's easier said than done. Yes. You yeah. know, to live up to the Word of God, to have these character changes in our lives. Okay. And I've, this next paragraph just reads, we believe that this thought mm. is a discouragement straight from the Ooh. enemy of souls himself, the devil. If he can discourage us to the point that we lo no longer strive oh. to turn away from sin mm. or to the point of giving up and just trying completely, mm. he claims victory over our souls. Mm. The good news, uh -huh. listen to this, the good news uh -huh. is we don't strive alone. Yeah. Right. Our yeah. source of strength and help is from above. Praise God. It comes from the one who overcame the temptations of the devil himself. And of course, all of us know, at least I hope you know that that is Christ Jesus, Amen. our Lord and Savior. So there's good news to start off with. <laughs> you know, the devil likes to mm. discourage. He likes to mm. make us depressed. He wants us to give up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot of people have been in that valley. I've been in that valley. Mm -hmm. I've been in that valley to the point that I wanted to just say, okay, goodbye to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, but praise God, by His grace, He kept making me think about my kids and who's going to take care of them, who's going to mm -hmm. raise them, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But that is the work of the enemy. Jesus says, I'm here. 
That's right. I'm mm -hmm. going to give you strength. I'm going to help you. I'm going to lift you up mm. with the right hand of my righteousness. One of my most favorite promises in Isaiah 41, verse 10. Mm -hmm. So this is a good place to start. Oh, well, isn't it though? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. So that's, we're, we're, we're praying, right? We already had prayer and we've been praying before the Absolutely. program. This will be a blessing. And again, we'll answer some of the questions that is, there's a big debate going on, uh, Brother Ryan. Mm -hmm. There's a debate going on, and, and you mentioned something before the program, you got my attention on it. And I think it'd be good to share with the viewers yeah. because of people say, well, I know what it says, but it, it's, it comes back as a but sometimes, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, this is the way we feel. So would you share absolutely. some of those, those thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, first of all, I just want to highlight the fact, going back to Isaiah chapter 1, verse eight, 18, actually, mm. that Eric read. Yes. I love how it starts out. It says, come now and let us reason together. <laughs> Okay, th yes. this is sometimes we have to come together and reason together. Yeah. This is one of those subjects where the Lord encourages us to come together, put our minds together based upon the Word of God and yes. the Word of God yes. alone and let us reason together in God's Word to come to the conclusion of what God's Word is actually saying. Amen. Not our own perceived theories, not our own ideas, not our own perceptions or, or, or personal theories, yes. but we want to know what does the Bible say. Amen. And you know, we're asking the question here today, we're talking about, you know, victory over sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the big sin issue, it's mm -hmm. what separates us from the Lord. The Bible teaches us that yes. very clearly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's so many people out out there that uh, they're going to answer that question. If you were to ask the masses, is it possible to have victory yeah. over sin now in this life? Mm -hmm. The majority of the Christian world, sadly to say, would probably answer that with a resounding no. Mm -hmm. And it's based on some misconceptions, okay. some, some lies that have been passed down, mm -hmm. uh, some deceptions that have been passed down, not based upon the Word of God, but based on man's theories, the devil's twisting, mm -hmm. the manipulation of certain texts and ideas that are not found in Scripture. And, you know, the, we're going to talk about this, I'm sure, but the Bible says that, what is, you know, first of all, let's ask the question, what is sin? Mm -hmm. We're talking about sin. Yes. We can, ha can we have victory over sin? Mm -hmm. What is sin? Sure. The Bible teaches us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, mm -hmm. that sin, very simply put, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. transgression mm -hmm. of the law. That's, That's right. It's transgression mm -hmm. of God's law. Yeah. And so if sin is transgression of God's law, here's the question. Mm -hmm. Then what is sin in relation to my nature? I know that's a big concept well, there. I yeah. just threw that out there and someone right now is going, wait, hold on. What, is it, what did you just say? <laughs> Relation to my nature. If sin is transgression of the law, simply put, mm -hmm. then is now sin a choice? In other words, when I, when I commit sin, right, I sin against the Lord. Am I choosing to do so? Or yeah. uh, here's where this concept of original mm -hmm. sin comes in, yeah. okay? And this mm -hmm. is a very dangerous ideology, a very dangerous teaching. Mm -hmm. But many, many Christians today believe in what's called original sin. Uh, it's a, it's a, I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. It's a Jesuit Catholic doctrine. It's not founded in Scripture, but it was written and created by a Catholic scholar many, many, many centuries mm -hmm. ago. And the idea is... Is, is that, well, you know, we inherited this, this fallen nature from Adam. Mm. That's true, right? Mm -hmm. But because we've inherited this fallen nature from Adam, then that means that I've inherited this bad equipment and I'm going to have this uh -oh. bad equipment until Jesus comes back at His second coming. Mm -hmm. Therefore, here's the logic, then I must be sinning all the way into the hey. second coming oh, of Jesus. Hey. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is from a person's perspective that believes in this original sin concept, that believes that sin is not a choice, but rather who they they are, their natural response. Mm -hmm. I've heard somebody say, well, I sin almost as constant as I breathe hmm. you know, because they believe, well, because I've got this bad equipment. That's just what I do. I sin. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to always sin huh. until Jesus comes back, until he changes me. Yes. We're asking, wow. is it possible? Does the Bible teach this, all that I've just described, mm -hmm. or does the Bible teach us that we can have victory over sin now in this life? Mm -hmm. And the question is, what did Jesus come to die for? Right. Exactly. Right. Jesus tells us, and we're right. going to see as we go through mm -hmm. these texts, as we talk and discuss, Good. you know, can can we have victory now in this life? Does Jesus want to give us victory now over mm -hmm. sin? Or are we going to continue to live in sin until he returns at his second coming? And that's what we're going to be discussing. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's powerful. And, and they say a mouthful, isn't it? It is that's a mouthful. Right. When you think yeah. about what he's talking about here, it just, just to kind of balance it up. We're a little thinking about living a, a life, letting Christ live in you mm -hmm. brings peace you know, and hope and encouragement. That's right. You know, and victory. That's right. And yet we, you know, some teach that, oh my, you can just continue on sin after sin after sin. That sounds more like a, a miserable mm. Christian than a happy Christian. What, what do you think? I've noticed, and I talk to a lot of Christians. Okay. And they seem to think that Christianity is a license to sin. Aha. Uh -huh. mm. Well. And I always default to the argument 
police. If you're pulled over by a police officer mm -hmm. and by grace, he lets you go. Does okay. that give you a license to continue speeding? And the answer is always no. Mm -hmm. So grace is not a license to sin. That's right. Neither is Christianity. That's right. And when I make that argument, they can never counter that argument. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't use Christianity as a license oh. to, do, to do evil things. It's not. Okay. If right. we love the Lord, we will keep His commandments. That's right. Amen. 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 So, yeah, to me, it's, it's a good stepping stone here as, as we begin because, again, victory over sin. Uh, some people, I mean, I, I read in Scripture, and I jotted some of them down just, and I don't want to go into them, but I just want to get more stepping. Mm -hmm. When I read the Bible, mm -hmm. and it says certain things so clear, and yet people interpret them that maybe the way they would like their lifestyle maybe to go. Exactly. Or they just figure, well, it's not what it says. Romans 6, it said, I need to be dead to sin. That's right. And then Romans, again, 6 and 7 says we need to be free from sin. Mm -hmm. You know, like what does that mean? That, you know, again, sin shall not have dominion over you. You know, when I read that, what does it mean? Again, uh, Jesus said, I think we'll talk more, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. What are these things really, he's able to keep you from falling. Mm -hmm. So when you look at these things, does it really mean what it says? Uh, I always Matt, want, go ahead. I always wondered if you could continue sitting, s sinning, what's the purpose of being born again? Uh huh. Right. That's There's okay. no purpose in being oh, born again if I can continue <laughs> sinning. Yeah. Yeah. It just never made any sense to me. That's you know, I'd like good. to go yeah. back because a lot of yeah. people, in fact, someone had just wrote in recently to 3ABN asking about, you know, how do we have victory over sin? And a lot of people with what you were talking about um, with predestination and all this stuff that, and you asked, what is the law to us? You know, mm -hmm. Paul says it's against us, mm -hmm. that we're no longer under the law. So people mm -hmm. take that and they misinterpret what that actually mm -hmm. means. We're no, under, no longer under the law because we are under grace and we're obeying mm -hmm. the law. And so the law is no longer against us because we're living it out. Mm -hmm. And he does go on and give examples of how, you know, what he means by mm -hmm. that. And you can go to Romans chapter six mm -hmm. and it, uh, let's just look at verses just real quick. Let's just look yeah. at verses 14. Okay. Uh, and then 15. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are no you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or mm. of obedience unto life. So it's, it's still black and white issue. Mm -hmm. You know, we're either going to yield our lives, our hearts, our minds, our obedience to the enemy. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. which leads to sin, okay. which is disobedience of the law of God. Mm -hmm. right. And or we're going to be under God's grace. We're going to do it by his strength and his power. We're going to live up to the law as best as we possibly can. We're also told if we fail, we have an advocate with the Father. Again, that's Jesus Christ. He's right. the way, he's the door, he's mm -hmm. everything, he's every breath we take, mm -hmm. you know. So we have a choice here. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. what Paul is saying. We're no longer under the law because we've accepted Jesus Christ. Paul was living for Christ, so the law wasn't against him anymore. Mm -hmm. Or it was against him, but you know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't something that he was under. He wasn't in that penalty of death anymore because mm -hmm. he was living in the yeah. light of Jesus Christ. So there is... There is so much here to cover, oh, but it's really, really, really good news because I've heard this argument for so many years, we just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Why try? I mean, especially when people believe in once saved, always saved. I believe in Christ, I'm saved, but yet they'll drink, they'll smoke, they'll watch anything, they don't go to church. Well, I accepted him mm -hmm. when I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. I'm saved. You, mm -hmm. you know, may rob a bank, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't have to obey mm -hmm. because they believe they're in a saving condition. But is that what the Bible teaches? Does mm -hmm. it teach that Christ says, well, Sister Marilyn, I just want mm -hmm. you to obey the law some of the time. Mm -hmm. I just want you to sin some of the time. Just kind of pull away mm -hmm. from some mm -hmm. of it, but you can keep some. Or does mm -hmm. he say, 
we need to do away completely with sin. Mm -hmm. And then what does that mean? And how do we do that? And I think the reason we get so discouraged is because we know we're failures. We know ourselves mm -hmm. better than, than anybody. God I knows know us better than we know ourselves, me. but than anybody else, we know how we think. We know our desires. So is there a process that we as Christians who have accepted Christ mm -hmm. into our heart mm -hmm. and want him as our Lord and Savior, is there a process that we mm -hmm. can daily live by mm -hmm. well. that will create mm -hmm. in us a new heart and a right Amen. spirit. Is yeah. there a process? That leads like to the first question yes, then, it does. Does. really. <laughs> you think about here, is it even possible to have a new birth in Christ and overcome sin in our lives? I mean, that's just a great big old open door right there. Absolutely. Eric? I think surrender is one of the most difficult things for me yes, sure. as a Christian. Yes. But if you surrender, you despise your sins. You don't want to exactly. sin anymore. You're disgusted by it. If, you, if you're yes. surrendered to God and His will, mm -hmm. um, in the military, they've taught us never surrender, uh -huh. never give up. Jesus says, surrender. Surrender your heart to me so that I can put the Holy Spirit in you Amen. that makes you disdain Amen. your sins. Amen. You mentioned, well, I'll go with new birth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, why, why a new birth if we continue on to do what we do? Things that uh, Paul said, I once loved, I, you know, which I now, I now hate. That's so right. Everything changes in our life. That's right. Why go through a new birth right. experience? What's the purpose of it? But yet we see it stressed. Mm -hmm. You know, Brother Ryan, well, I see it stressed in Scripture over and over oh, and over that I need to be, I need to be converted. Is that That's Matthew right. 18, That's right. 3 talks about there, there needs to be a conversion That's right. process. That's what, that's what Jesus said to Peter. Satan, Satan wants to sift you as, mm -hmm. as wheat, Peter. Uh, but I'm praying for you that when you are converted, you can strengthen the brethren. So there is a such thing as conversion. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's powerful. We're talking about victory over sin, overcoming. Mm -hmm. It's funny, it, it, very interesting, not funny, but interesting that Christ to all of the different churches of Asia Minor in Revelation. What does he say to every single one of them? He says, he repeats two messages to every single one of them. Number one, he says, I know your works. Mm. To each and every uh, one of them, I know your uh -huh. works, I know your works, I know your works, I know your works. But at the end of each and every one of those messages, as he's giving that hope to them, as he's, as he's trying to call them out of their condition of whatever it may be, he says to each and every one of them, yes. he says, to him who overcomes. Good. Wow. To him yes. who overcomes, wow. to him who overcomes. In fact, Revelation, uh, right there to, to the Laodicea, he says, to him who overcomes, I will grant with him to set with me and my father, uh, to set with me on my throne as I sit with my father on his throne. Yes. To him who overcomes. What are we overcoming? Exactly. <laughs> what is Christ, when he says yeah. to him who overcomes, uh, Jesus, excuse me, um, what am I overcoming? Right. You're overcoming the world. You're overcoming the sin yeah, of the right. world. Yes. In fact, it's, it's amazing when you consider it, I want to just read this for a okay. second because to me, I mean, you, you, you're not even, let's say you've never read the Bible. Okay. You've never read the New Testament. You're coming to know this Jesus yes. for yourself. Okay. And you, let's say of all texts or all passages you want to start with in Matthew chapter one, let's say you want to okay. start with the gospels. Okay. okay. Someone asked me the other day, Ryan, which gospel or which <laughs> book should I start yes. with? Well, I always encourage to start with Genesis because the beginning of the story is powerful and it's important. Yes, it but if you're going to come to know Christ and Man. the life of Christ, yes. a good place to start would be the very first gospel, the very first chapter. Mm. You're not even 21 verses into this first chapter chapter of mm -hmm. Matthew, you've been introduced to these genealogies of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now you come down to verse 21 and notice what it says. Speaking of Mary, it says, and she will bring forth a son yes. and, you shall, and you shall call his name Jesus mm -hmm. for he will save his people from Ooh, their Amen. sins. <laughs> okay, so notice this is some, let's say there's someone who's never read the gospels my, before. My, my. They're 21 verses in and they're already yes. being told that Jesus has come for the sole purpose of saving his people mm -hmm. from their sins. Now yeah. what's that? What does that mean? Right. Because if there's someone right now watching, they're going to say, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saved. You know, I'm saved because well. Jesus saved me from my sin. But what does that mean? Yes. Uh, the best illustration I can give, mm -hmm. if you're walking, let's say we're walking, you know, me and a friend is walking out in the middle of the Serengeti in Africa and a hungry lion jumps out from behind a bush and starts mauling my friend. And my friend is mm. there screaming and hollering from the distance, oh. going, ah! You know, save me from this hungry lion, right? Oh, yeah. And you stand on the sideline and you're clapping and going, Oh, brother, <laughs> I, I saved you. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You're saved. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. 
That would and, work. and all the while that line yeah. is just you know eating away. You're you're saved, hallelujah. Yeah, that you know, it, it's is it one from the perspective of that person being eaten mm -hmm. from that lion or by that lion, they're not gonna stand over there and, and be praising, oh, praise the Lord while I'm getting eaten by I'm saved. No, 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 no. You're not saved from the lion until you're saved from the lion. Mm -hmm. Until right. the lion is, is no longer in your presence, until right. it's no longer attacking you. Until That's so right. the, the point I know it's a yeah. silly illustration, but no. there is a difference between saving in and saving from. And so a lot of people have this concept that saved from their sins means that they're going to continue to live in sin. Mm. But that's not, that's not Jesus saving you mm -hmm. from your sins. That's the, the false concept of Jesus saving you in your sin, which is nowhere found in Scripture. No, it's good. Probably one of the yeah. most powerful texts that really confirms this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go there because it's, it's probably one of the most heavy hitting mm. passages in all of Scripture. Okay. And then we, we can discuss the language of this because it's a very strong language. Mm. Uh, 1 John chapter 3. Let's go to oh, 1 John chapter okay. 3. Probably in no other part of Scripture mm -hmm. is it made more clear of God's feelings and His attitude towards sin yes. than right here in this passage. Mm -hmm. 1 John chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start reading from verse 4 uh, onward. So 1 John chapter 3, mm -hmm. uh, verse 4 and onward. So notice what the Bible says here. So we read this earlier. It says, whosoever commits sin also mm -hmm. commits lawlessness, for sin is lawless. King James yes. Version says, sin is transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. But notice what John continues to write under the inspiration of the Holy okay. Spirit. And tell me if this isn't powerful. Mm -hmm. Starting with verse 5 here. It says, and you know that He was manifest take to take away our sin. sins. Amen. He being Christ mm -hmm. came to take away our sins. Mm -hmm. And in Him there is no sin. Man, come on. Now, a lot of people want to stop there and go, praise the Lord. Uh -oh. Praise the Lord that in Jesus is no sin. He was uh -huh. perfect, right? Uh -huh. But notice what it continues to say. Oh, yeah. Oh, Verse boy. 6 and onward. Mm -hmm. Whoever abides in Him mm -hmm. does not sin. Mm -hmm. Whoever mm -hmm. sins neither seen Him or known Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little children, let no one deceive you. Mm -hmm. He who practices righteousness is righteous. righteous. Amen. Just as He is righteous. And verse 8, mm -hmm. he who sins is of the devil, Mercy. for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Right. For the purpose of the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of... What did he come to do? Destroy. He came to destroy yeah. the... Not continue Ooh. in, but That's to right. destroy right. the works of the devil. That's and then right. verse 9, whoever has been born of God, mm -hmm. there's born of God. There's that, there's that recreation. There's that conversion concept. Yes. Whoever is born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has has been born of God. Mm -hmm. well, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes. Is this passage saying that a person who is converted will never ever commit a sin again? Yeah. You know, I believe that this is speaking of ho the habitual That's practice right. of sin. Mm -hmm. That's right. Christ has come to save us from that old lifestyle. That's 2 right. Corinthians 5.17. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What does yes. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tell us? Yeah, it says it says that all things, all, all things, things have passed away. Behold, behold, all things all have things. come new. He wants to create a new creature. Yes. And so in this case, our old habitual sinful life has passed away. Yes. Now He's created in us a new heart, a new desire, a new way of life. Right. That doesn't mean that a righteous man won't fall. Remember mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 24, right. a righteous man may fall seven times, but the difference between the righteous man mm -hmm. and the unrighteous is that the righteous man gets back up Amen. and presses forward and does not continue to live in that sin. Mm -hmm. And so I know I've unpacked and unloaded a it's whole, a I feel like I've just good. machine gunned that just <laughs> then. Uh, but, but nonetheless, we're talking about, is it possible? That's what question one is asking. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have that new birth? And I've just mentioned two or three different passages just in this last few minutes. Mm -hmm. But the Bible is overwhelmingly clear that Christ has come Amen. to save us, not in our sin, yes. but from our sin. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. And it's, it, 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 Hebrews, if we sin, we, love, we have an we have advocate. an advocate <laughs> with the Father. Amen. I think that just kind of goes along with that. So if we happen to slip, if we happen to fall, but Absolutely. you know, again, there's character changes. There's things that take place in our mm -hmm. life that will not willfully okay. sin. Now, right. can, okay. now, can I yeah. give it? You, yeah, sure. In your lesson here, you talked about us giving an illustration or a story. Yes. Let me illustrate this Good. for a moment. Okay. Years ago, before I was a Christian, before I truly gave my heart genuinely to Christ. I had an, a really, really bad anger problem. Mm -hmm. I had a very filthy mouth. Mm -hmm. I, was, I cursed with every other word. That's my past. I'm not proud of it. But that was my old man. Yeah. That's who I was. That was me pre-Christ. Mm -hmm. 
And so that was, that was uh, I mean, it was almost a part of my vocabulary. I was an angry person. I mm. spoke angry. Right. When somebody had a conversation with me, you could tell that I was a bitter mm. man. Mm -hmm. And so the point is that before Christ came into my life, it was my habit. It was a mm. part of my myself, my old man, that that's just who I was. That's how I acted. That's how I chose to speak. Yes. Now enters Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I accept Jesus into my heart and I had a conversion experience, okay, mm -hmm. Jesus, as I came to him I, and, and, I, and I asked him to come into my heart and to change me, yes. he sanctified me from that. That's right. Yes. He, he, took, he took that from me because I gave yeah. it to him willfully. That's and right. I said, Lord, I don't want to be like this anymore. No. I don't want to speak like this anymore. That's right. Lord, I genuinely want you to change me. Now, in that first you know, week or two, sometimes I would slip up and... Uh, you know, and I might say something that, but nonetheless, I started to notice mm -hmm. a week out, two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks mm -hmm. out, a month out, six months out. I, before you know it, eight months down the road, I'm looking back and I'm like, mm. whoa, right. mm -hmm. what has happened? I'm not, I'm not the same person That's right. because Christ changed me. He took that old man. He's, he wiped it away. He cleansed it. Yes. And now I became a new person. My vocabulary changed. Yes. My attitude Amen. changed. Okay. My Everything. perception on, on, on life changed. My spiritual vision, yes. my understanding changed. Now here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Let's fast forward. I don't know. 13 years later, yes. mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I would, would have <laughs> never ever dropped a, 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 an accidental bad word? Okay, the point is, you know, there's really it's no accident. You choose to do that when mm -hmm. sin is a choice. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, have I? I'm not gonna sit here and act like, oh, I've not sinned or I'm not cursed in 13 years. Mm -hmm. But what, here's the difference. It might have been 10 years before I said that word. Mm -hmm. And then one day it came, it popped in my mind. I said yeah. it, mm -hmm. oh, and I immediately went to the Lord in Amen. prayer and said, Lord, my right. old man yes. came back for a yeah. moment. Yeah. Lord, I'm, I'm praying in Jesus' name Amen. that you crucify that old it's, man what's right the now. Key? You're telling us the key here about victory over sin is if we sin. If, if we, we sin, we slip. That's right. In other words, right. the devil catches us unaware. That's right. We're not right. thinking about it. Boom, boom. But, but if our mind is stayed upon Christ, right. that right. won't happen. But if we, if, okay. But what do so we do the, immediately? Do we immediately yeah. we go and we confess that sin? We don't live out till Correct. the night time or right. Right. prayer time. Right then and there. Oh Lord, I shouldn't have said that. The That's difference right. between the one person I used to be and the yes. person then is that. Before, it was my habitual choice, my habit of life mm -hmm. to live in that. Now, I don't, that's not my habit anymore. I don't do that every day. I don't say those things every no. day. I'm not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But when I, if, if I occasionally make yeah. that bad choice because for a moment I take my eyes off Christ, yes. I'm quick to flee to the throne of grace Amen. and repent and say, Lord, take that from me. Amen. And again, that righteous man may fall seven times, but yeah. he gets back up yeah. and he learns from it and he moves forward because yeah. he's not the same man Amen. that he was that's before. I can oh, guarantee though, right. I can guarantee oh. it wasn't just the, I accept Jesus and then it was done. done. Yeah. <laughs> you were right. walking yeah. through the sanctuary yeah. that why way oh God. You sorrow for it. That's you right. sorrow you for sorrow it. Not for only it. that, but you were praying, you were studying, mm -hmm. you were sharing. That's right. You know, in the first compartment of the sanctuary, Amen. we learn about mm -hmm. those things. <clears throat> those things are vital. Yes. That we eat of the word every day, that we drink of it every day, that we're sharing with others what God is doing for us. That's how it began to change. That's when your life changes. I've said it many, many times. True. You know, for years, I didn't have a real good study habit. Mm -hmm. But once I began to say, okay, before mm -hmm. I eat any physical food, I'm going to eat of the spiritual food. Mm -hmm. My yeah. life Life began to change That's right. and Amen. things were different. I want to share something that just reiterates what he read in scripture. And then I want to throw it to you, mm -hmm. my dear sister, because yes. I don't think we've heard enough of your sweet <laughs> voice. And I'd like for you to answer question number one. Well, we're giving it in roundabout way here, yes, but I think right. you can bring it into a concise manner mm -hmm. for us, okay? Mm -hmm. This uh, quote is found in Desire of Ages, page 311. It says, God's ideal mm. for his children is higher than the highest oh, human thought wow. can reach. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, mm. yes. He doesn't see where you Amen. are, Brother right. Eric. He doesn't see where I am. He doesn't see where I've been. Yeah, he sees right. what I can be. That's I like right. that now. Ooh, that's, right. that's exciting. That is exciting. Amen. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, mm -hmm. is perfect. We know that's a quote from Scripture. Mm -hmm. This command is a promise. Listen mm. to this. The plan of redemption contemplates our complete recovery from the power, our complete recovery from the power of Satan. Amen. How did Daniel stand in yeah. faith? 
and be thrown into wow. the lion's mm -hmm. den? That's right. How did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stand in faith and not bow down mm -hmm. to that false worship, That's right. that false mm -hmm. image? That's right. They had enough faith that they were willing, as Christ did, to die, die right. rather than sin. That's so right. part Good. of this, part of this perfection is faith in Jesus, mm, faith right. in His yeah. Word. Absolutely. Even if we don't fully understand it, this is what God's Word says, I believe it, I accept it, and I'm going to stand on Amen. it. Okay, let me yeah. continue. Ooh, well, I just lost my again. screen. Can I say something yes. before we go? Yes. Yeah. Go right ahead. Go ahead. It's a 180 degree transformation. Amen. Yes. And I claim that transformation. Amen. Praise God. Because when I look at who I was, a gang member in Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn and Queens, mm. running the streets, doing all kind of wickedness. Yes. And I tell Marilyn some of these stories. Mm -hmm. She says, I don't see that in you. Good. That's the best <laughs> feeling in the world. Amen. That's it's a not, testimony. It's, it's testimony. not there Witness. anymore. All I'm right. ashamed of it. Yes. Not proud of it. No. Can't do it if you paid me. It's a 180 degree transformation in your character. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do I slip up every once in a while? Mm -hmm. Do I get angry every once in a while? You, you, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head. Mm. Uh oh, look out now. Uh -huh. But you can keep them from camping out in your hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have a lot of hair left, so I don't have to worry <laughs> about that too much. But I heard a pastor say that once, yes. and I always remembered it. Yeah. You fall on your knees like David did, yeah. and you repent, and you move forward. Amen. You know, that's something Amen. to remind me there. And Marilyn, you can go ahead with that. Is, is, is one day when I, I was working, doing all kinds of stuff, and I was in the truck. And I just kind of looked up to the Lord and I said, everything in the world has went wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything <laughs> I went, you know, go to do is wrong. Could it really get, any, you know how you sometimes, could it really get any worse? And I had my arm out the window sitting in the truck. I said, could it really get any worse? And about that time, a bird flew over. That's right. And I said, you know, it just got worse. You know, it, it's just an illustration. The birds, like you said, if I kept my arm in. That's right. If I'd have kept my walk with Christ. That's right. Yes. Maybe things wouldn't have gotten worse. And it, one thing that's very interesting is my mother always gave the illustration. She said one time to me, she said she did the... Uh, the, the pillow slips, I think I might have talked about it before. Uh, pillow slip where you, I don't embroidery. know. Embroidery. Embroidery. I've got it all together. <laughs> embroidery, pillow slips with pictures on them. Right. And so she showed me one time, I said, man, that looks, you know, wow, that's, how's that? She had it wrong side out, number one. She said, look at this. It was like a wad of spaghetti. <laughs> there was thread going over this way, different colors going here. It was the biggest mess I ever saw. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she turned it right side out, looked, and there's a beautiful picture. Mm. She yeah. said, from heaven, God looks down and he sees the finished product. Amen. Amen. What you Amen. can be through That's him. Right. Mm -hmm. We look up, we see a spaghetti mess. That's right. Mm -hmm. Going in every different direction and there's no hope That's right. except we go to the scripture. So remember, God's looking at what you uh, can be through, yes. through right. him. That's Marilyn, right. what do you it, think about that? Can, is that possible? If you don't mind, let me just finish oh, this Oh, go quick. ahead. Oh. And I want to say, could, well. can you imagine, this is exactly what Nicodemus <laughs> wanted to understand <laughs> yes. when he talked about being bro on. born again, right. right? But I want to finish this quote from Desire of Ages again. Again, page 311. Christ <laughs> always separates the contrite heart, that truly yes. repentant heart from sin. Mm -hmm. He came to destroy the works of the devil mm -hmm. and he has made, pro he, Christ, has made uh, provision that the Holy Spirit shall be imparted to every repentant soul to keep wow. him from sinning. It's not our strength. We don't have That's strength right. within That's ourselves. Right. That's right. It's all about allowing him to come in Amen. to repent from our sins now, sister. I'm throwing it back to you. <laughs> all right now. <laughs> okay. Is it possible for us to overcome sin in our lives? Absolutely. I think every day it's a conversion. Every minute mm -hmm. we have to look to Christ to give us that strength. And I think wow. you all have made valid points. When we start out as Christian, you know, uh, we don't have all the answers, but as we grow in our walk in Christ, we become stronger in our, our as we lean on Him, old habits are passed away Come and on, we now. create new yes. right. Yes. So yes, I, I, I believe that. I, mm -hmm. you know, but you have to stay in Christ each and every day mm -hmm. because Satan is always there ready to tempt that's you. Right. Oh, he's and, and, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Isn't it, I mean, isn't that wonderful? You think about, and it's, I don't want to say story, it, it's sharing your life experience. Brother Ryan did, Eric, you did. Mm -hmm. And each of our hearts and our lives, mm -hmm. we see changes. 
and I look in the mirror, I'm not happy with all that. I, I know there's more changes that need to take place. And I notice when, if you slip and you fall, you do something, it says, what is it, Second Corinthians 3.18, mm -hmm. you know, we look in that glass. That's right. And it's, it's by beholding we become changed. That's right. If I'm not beholding on a regular basis, the enemy's going to behold me. That's right. He's going to take charge in my life. So I need right. to behold him. And just quickly, I think if we start, if we look at that question, is it really a reality? And Isaiah, uh, was it chapter 6, 1 through 5, Isaiah was given a, in a vision the throne, oh, glory, the throne room of God. That's right. I mean, I th I'm getting goosebumps right now. That's right. He was a throne, and again, the, the holy and the holy of holies. Mm -hmm. He beheld the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And as he was beholding the glory and the purity and the majesty and the power of God, it changed his whole life. You're thinking he's, he's a man of God. Woe is but me. Good. <laughs> Bottom line, he looked as he was beholding. He said, woe is me for I, I'm, I, I'm undone. That's right. <laughs> if we come to that point in our Christian life and quit being so, can I say puffed up, mm -hmm. so prideful sometime mm -hmm. that we've got it made. That's right. We got the message. Mm. You know, we, we have the experience. And as a lady come to me one time, she said, well, I know, Pastor, I've, I've lived seven years without sin. Mm -hmm. I said, well, praise God, today you might have just blown it. <laughs> well, be careful. You know what I'm saying? We need not have that. You follow what I'm saying here? Yes, yes. It's, it's not try to judge or to criticize her for saying that. It was the idea of if sometimes if we think that, mm -hmm. that we're not striving to be more like Christ. How many of us can mm -hmm. say, I'm just like Christ? Mm -hmm. I have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. As I told the story many times, I pray for years, Lord, I want to, be, I want to have wisdom, spiritual wisdom. Not, not of the world. I don't care much right. about the world. But I, I, give me the wisdom of Solomon in spiritual things. That's right. And so the Lord returned. After years of going doing that, he finally said to me in my spirit one day, Kenny, what's wrong with being like me? Mm. That's what the scripture said. It never said to pray to be like Solomon, did it? Right. And of course, the end result is my lands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he said, pray that we have the mind of Christ. Of Christ. Mm -hmm. I have to have the mind of Christ so that he helps me and gives me power to make right. the right choice and decision because I'm not going to do that for years of growing up in the church. I beheld more of the world than I did Christ. That's right. So like each one of you are talking about, those were things in my mind at first, just like that. As I grew up, I always had a, I almost, can I say smart tongue? Mm -hmm. Fast tongue? <laughs> <laughs> Not that way so much anymore, praise God. But I'm just saying that, you know, I had an answer. I had something all the time going on, and I didn't mind to, to fuss a little bit and carry on. That's right. But some, the Lord keeps impressing my mind sometimes. Sit and just listen. You know, think and pray. Commit yourself to God. So mine is, I'm going to have to have grace. I need to behold, we're talking about victory over sin, are we not? Right. Victory over right. sin. I'm, I must behold him. I must get a vision. And as I get a vision of Christ, I behold him every day. I find myself undone. Mm -hmm. I'm not eating, no, nowhere near where God would have me to be. I don't know if that, maybe you feel the same way. Each mm -hmm. one of you feel the same way. One of the things that I learned during my period of transformation yes. was I read a scripture that said, put no evil thing before your eyes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that Good. was key for me yes. because I was listening to music mm. that was telling me things. It was telling me that uh -huh. I wasn't worthy. The world doesn't care about you. Treat people this way. My, my, my. Get all the money you can. It was feeding me this information. Mm -hmm. So when I read that scripture, it told me I'm listening to the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I'm watching the wrong thing. So part of my transformation was I remember driving down the, the highway in Florida, going to Tampa, uh -huh. throwing tapes when we had video, those little cassette yes. tapes, throwing the tapes out the window mm. of the music I was listening to. I was that convicted by Amen. it. Good. It was still, there was still a process after that, Good. but that started my conviction mm -hmm. that these things had to go in order for me to complete yes. my transformation. Yes. So it was, it was more yes. than just being convicted that it was wrong. It's again, divinity and what? Humanity. And humanity That's right. working together. That's right. Humanity, right. Divinity was impressing you. Right? The Holy Spirit impressing you. It's wrong. Our part was then, oh, I, I need not have these things around. That's Ooh. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. by the grace of God. That's doing That's right. our part is to fight the good fight of faith. It's not of works. I don't want anybody writing in and giving a call and say, oh, you believe in, you know, it's all about works. Mm -hmm. Our <laughs> most righteous is a filthy rag. God right. does not accept anything righteousness of ours. Amen. We have none. Amen. That's it's all right. about Him. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Good. And that, that means that you're going to follow them. You're going to do them. And I'm so glad that you pointed that out because so many times during this lesson, and maybe I said it earlier, I just don't recall, but when we begin to study, we begin to learn what sin is. We begin oh, to look at ourselves mm -hmm. and differently and say, ooh, 
wow, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus says he, he brought a sword, a two-edged sword, that's right. and that's what it is. The Bible is a two-edged sword. It's going to cut, it's going to separate, it's going to divide. It's going to point out things that, that, like Paul said, I once loved, now I, na now I hate. Oh. You know, because there's many times, which leads us into question number two, mm -hmm. that there are people that have sins in their life oh, that, that they, they, love. they love. They don't want to get rid of. And sometimes we have sins that we don't even realize is a sin until we're studying the Word of God. So I know we're about out of time, but let me just Already? jump in here. It numbered, question number two, it says, many people love their sin. Mm. Many people are addicted to their sin. Yes. So how will Christ strengthen us to walk through this life of sanctification? How will we ever get to the point that, that the sin that we may now love, we will later hate? Wow. Mm. By building our relationship with Christ. Praise yeah. God. Yeah, you have to, the more you draw near to Him, the less likely you are to keep those old habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, you, if you're an open vessel and you allow God to pour the Holy Spirit into you, He's going to displace all of that. Mm -hmm. So that when, you're, when I drive down the street and I hear the music that I used to love, yes. mm. it pulls up next to me, I have Ooh, to roll the windows window. up. There you I'm go. completely, okay. I don't like yeah. it anymore. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. there's no room for that in your life. So you, so you, wow. you really Love can't that. go around Love that, that stuff that used to be no, you can't. an issue, right? It's right. kind of walking on a precipice on, on the line there. You look out, you're going to go I over. look at it this way. You can force yourself not to sin. You could say, I'm not going to sin. You can stay in your house, not go anywhere, yeah. stare in the mirror and not sin. You can force yourself to do it perhaps. But that's not a change of heart. No, it's not. It's no. Right. It it's about a transformation of your right. heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. I had a man in New York one time, he, he, years before he became a Christian, he, he was a dancer. And people say, oh, well, anyway, he loved to dance. And so he said, you know, certain kind of music, and this was 20 years later, he became a Christian. And he's come, he said, every time I hear a certain beat, he said, I don't notice it, but my feet are moving around underneath right. the table. <laughs> he said, when I see them moving, I said, Lord, don't let my feet do that. Right. Kind of like the man that smoked for 20 or 30 years. He's given it up 10 to 15 years, and he's sitting there talking to you. I've had it happen many times, and he's doing like this. Oh. Right. Yeah. What is he doing? That's oh. a habit. A habit he had for many, many years. He didn't even know he's doing it. One of his brother was Terry one time, and I told him, I said, Terry, what are you doing? He's going like this. I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, oh, I, I, I didn't know I was doing it. So I'm well, saying those things may try to creep right. back into our life. By the grace of God, know our weaknesses, mm -hmm. right. but also know the strength and the grace mm -hmm. right. of God. If you don't know, here's one of the big questions maybe we can talk about, Brother Ron, you think about, is where does grace come in? Where does mm -hmm. grace come in of gaining victory over sin? And how do I know? Because one of the biggest questions I get is people who've been in the movement for 20 years say something like this. I don't know if I'm really in a, I want to say saving relationship. I use save, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've been saved. After all these years of belonging to the church for 40 years, I don't know that I'm in a saving relationship with Christ. What do I do? What advice would we, would we give them as four or five minutes we've got left? If we, well, well, I mean, I think, you know, going back to the grace concept, the fact, yeah. that, the, fact that the Bible tells us that, that um, if we confess our sins, Come on now that He is just to forgive us our sins Man. and to cleanse us, I love this, oh. from all unrighteousness. The fact that Christ has given us that promise shows the grace and the mercy that He has towards us at all times. Man. That if we come to the point to where we sorrow for that sin and we say, Lord, I, I recognize that that's not according to Your will, that this You don't want this in my life. And we come to Him and we lay that down at His feet and we say, Lord, I'm, we humble ourselves. Remember that uh, yes. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, mm. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves mm. and pray. Really, overcoming sin is all mm. about humility. It's all yeah. about taking upon ourselves the mind of Christ mm -hmm. but through the faith of Jesus yes. in order to humble ourselves like Jesus did in a world that really He didn't belong. Jesus didn't belong in this world. He belonged in, in, in His kingdom, but He humbled Himself. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Yes. He humbled Himself yes. as low as a servant to serve man and to take on the nature of man. As the Bible says, not the nature of angels, but the nature of man. He took upon sinful flesh and He subjected Himself mm. to that to teach us. In fact, let me yeah. read this. Well, I have to sh read this really quickly right. and we're going to get back to this, this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, uh, I want to read this to you. Powerful, powerful quote. And this comes from the upward look. Mm. I found this quote and I had to read it. 
because it was just so powerful. Yeah. Uh, this comes from the Upward Look, page 303. It says, Christ took humanity mm -hmm. and bore the hatred of the world that he might show men and women that they could live without sin. That's powerful. And so if we consider for just a moment the fact that we, we do have access to that grace. Christ wants to save us by grace through faith, as the mm -hmm. Bible says. But we have to humble ourselves just as Christ humbled Himself. We have to humble ourselves and recognize that this sin is leading us to death. Mm -hmm. And I just also wanted to bring something else out. Also, the question number two is asking here, um, it's asking, uh, so how will Christ strengthen us mm -hmm. to walk through this life of sanctification? Well, what's one of our favorite texts that we often quote, John 14, 15? Yeah, yeah. If you love me, mm -hmm. keep my commandments. And a lot of people stop right there. Mm -hmm. But notice the yeah. verse that follows. In response to that, he says, And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Ever. Amen. How is God going to strengthen us and, and, and help us in this time? Verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in mm -hmm. my name, he will teach you all things. He will bring all things to your remembrance. Amen. John 16, verse 8, mm. here it is, talking about that helper. And he who has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And in verse 13, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you Amen. into all truth. For he will... He will uh, Excuse me. He will guide you into all truth, mm -hmm. for he will not speak of his own authority. And whatever he hears, he speaks, mm -hmm. and he will show you all things to come. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is given to us as a promise mm -hmm. to help us overcome sin. Amen. That's, That's our right. strength in That's Christ right. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. The Lord. You know, we're getting close to yes. a news break, yes, but I'd like are. to share. Okay. Number one, we need to learn to claim God's promises. We need to make them our own. I mentioned earlier Isaiah 41. That is such a good one when you're yes. struggling because God is our strength, our help, and He will uphold us. Study, study, study. But this, I want to share a quote. This is from Testimonies, Volume 1, page mm. 158. It so sums up what we're talking about. It says, a Christian has victory over his besetments, mm. over his passions. Are you listening? Oh, mercy. I mean, even our passions, our thoughts need to be mm -hmm. in subjection to our, our Lord and Savior. There is a remedy. There is a remedy. That's good I news like that. for good the news. sin sick soul. Amen. That remedy is Jesus, Amen. precious Savior. Amen. His grace is sufficient for the weakest and the strongest must also have His grace or perish. Mm. Grace is given mm. us what we don't deserve. I saw how this grace could be obtained. Now listen, here it is. Here's no, the key. Go to your closet, closet. and there alone right. plead with God. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Psalms 51 verse 10. Be in in earnest. The Bible talks about a contrite heart. Be sincere, fervent in prayer. Avail, fervent prayer availeth much. Amen. And we could go on and on. But listen, humanity and divinity working together, Amen. we have to make an effort. Right. It's not a once and done. That's it's right. not a once saved, always saved. Yes. You know, Christ comes in, but we He's not going to force us. We have to invite right. him and, and it's a struggle for us because he's showing us what needs to go. He's mm. cleaning us up. We're Amen. in the hospital of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right. And so he's our great physician. He's taking uh -huh. care of us. Mm -hmm. He gives us every breath. Yes. It's wonderful. I better Amen. turn it over to you. Oh, no, praise. Oh, that's, that's all break. good. And we're, we're having like a little bit of a church yes. right here in that, <laughs> we're, by the grace of God. But, you know, right now we're going to just take a small news break right now. Remember, this is exciting. Don't go away. We'll be back with some closing thoughts. Welcome back. We have a couple of minutes left. We want to go around the table fast as we can go and give some thoughts that the Holy Spirit has put in our mind. Wrap it up. Brother Eric, we'll start with you. For many years I was deceived and it's because oh. I didn't study the Bible. Okay. So study the Bible, Amen. show yourself approved. If it's not according to scripture, then it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. If my feelings aren't supported in scripture, then it's not for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's if good. someone tells me something and it's not in Scripture, mm -hmm. it's not for me. Mm. Would that be kind of like to the law and the testimony? That's right. Amen. So study the Bible to show yourself approved. Amen. To keep from being deceived like I was. Amen. Amen. Sister Amen. Marilyn? Um, one thing that came to my mind is um, there are some people that are still struggling out there and not to give up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ Amen. will always be with you as long as you stand by Him. Mm. Um, Satan is out there to deceive us. And um, it can be a little discouraging sometimes, but mm -hmm. stay strong. 
mm -hmm. and keep the faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank to me, it comes much. down to the love of the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12 says, Good. because they did not have the love of the truth mm -hmm. that they might be saved, God sent them a strong delusion that they continue to believe a lie. Yes. Uh, don't believe that lie. Mm. Pray to the Lord and say, God, give me a love yes. for your truth. And He will do that indeed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think there is hope. There's help. We're not in this battle alone. The Bible means what it says. It says, be ye perfect. How can we do that? Don't mm -hmm. get overwhelmed. Like, like you just said, yes. have hope, have faith, trust in God. The Holy Spirit's there. He is our helper. He's our comforter. He's mm -hmm. our guide. He's going to strengthen us through the power of Jesus Christ. Love uh -huh. it. Amen. Amen. Awesome. We want to thank those of you at home and thank each one here for the Holy Spirit working through your heart and through your life. Just a closing thought. The path to freedom mm -hmm. from sin is through the crucifixion of self. God bless you. We'll see you next time.